Okay, fair enough. Let's see. Jimi Hendrix is number one. Okay, fair enough. Darn right. He pushed the envelope. Chuck Berry was great. Now, and he, he also really did some catchy stuff. Am I going to put him number two? No, I'm going to put Guthrie Govan here. Definitely. Chuck Berry will be on the list somewhere, but just not here. Jimmy Page, same way. Now, Jimmy Page was really a beast in the studio. Live, not so much. I might put Sean Lane here. Er, no, okay, maybe I might put Sean Lane here. Put Guthrie Govan here. I don't know, it's really kind of a kind of a fight between the two. Okay, but Jimmy Page would also be on the list somewhere. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, okay. We're going to take Eddie Van Halen. We're going to have to shift him up here to number th three. No. Yeah, no. Maybe Eddie Van Halen's fine where he's at. Another beast. Okay. Jeff Beck. Uh, okay. Well, Guthrie Govan got most of his influence from Jeff Beck. So maybe we take Guthrie Govan. We put him here. We would then take Jeff Beck and move him up to number two. And okay. That's a happy list right there. Oh, wait. Where does Sean Lane go? Sean Lane will go to number three, but Sean Lane is actually much more technical. So Sh Sean Lane would have to go to number two. Of course, I don't know. That number one spot, Jimi Hendrix. Okay, if, if we're going for a technical list, Jimi Hendrix, we'd have to, okay, he would have to go. Not, not entirely off the list. I mean, for his day, he was one of the most technical. But for nowadays, no, definitely not. So then you would have to put Sean Lane here. Or would you put Al Demiola? No, excuse me. Al Demiola, too, but he, he would go a little further up on the list. Alan Holdsworth, right? We'd put Alan Holdsworth here. We'd probably put um, Frank Gambale here. No, we would still put Sean Lane here. Yeah, there you go. Alan Holdsworth, Sean Lane, Frank Gambale here. <clears throat> there we go. Now it's okay. And then we would have Guthrie Govan, no doubt. Uh, we might have Rusty Cooley here. He, he, he's he got some serious, or actually Petrucci. I'd probably put Petrucci here for sure. And then uh, I would put probably Rusty Cooley there. Serious picking chops. Maybe Danny Joe Carter here. Uh, probably one of the fastest pickers alive. Um, you know, speed is everything to me. I'm sorry. You know, BB King is great, but speed is where it's at. It's much more exciting. We could hear blues licks all day long, right? We could hear, you know, funky rhythm scratches all day long. That's fine. But anymore, nowadays, shred is where it's at. And we might as well take you know, somebody like Tim Henson, right? Maybe put Tim Henson right here. Joni Mitchell, she's great, but why would she be on the greatest guitarist list when really she should be on like the greatest songwriters list, right? Being a song, being a guitarist or being a songwriter in terms of the way we've come to know them are really two different things, right? And most guitarists, are really just horrible songwriters as it is. So, you know, and kind of vice versa as well. So I'm not saying that she was a bad guitar player. because She's probably fine, fine at playing, but she doesn't make this list, right? Um, who else do we have there? So we had um, uh, some of the jazz guys. We got Pat Martino up there. Pat Martino would have to go here. Al Di Miola probably would go here, even though Dwayne is great. And actually, as a slide player, yeah, Dwayne probably belongs here. Um, but then right behind Dwayne would probably be Carlos. I'm sorry, but he's kind of more just iconic. I never found him to be a great player, to be honest. I would probably put Derek Trucks here. <clears throat> yeah. And then this way, we could probably, you know, the jazz guys always kind of get the bottom of the barrel, even though they actually tend to outplay rock players or blues players or anything else. We'll put a jazz guy here. We'll probably put uh, John McLaughlin here. 
uh, something like that, you know, fusion player. Or how about George Benson? There you go. That guy has some serious chops. But then what about uh, Joe Pass? No, Joe Pass would have to go here. And then we go to, and again, Tony Iommi is a great guitar player. He's shaped metal, but he'd have to go further up on the list. And instead, you would, you, you had a, what was it? You had, there you would have George Benson, right? Or did I say George Benson up here? I don't know. I can't remember. Nevertheless, I'm going to work on rewriting this list. Uh, now, Prince was very good. Prince could play the hell out of the guitar. Would he fall up there with the chops players like the rest of them? No, he just brought more personality to it, right? Um, yeah, if you put uh, him and Eddie Van Halen on the stage, Eddie would have eaten him alive. But I'm sure he's taking lessons up there right now <laughs> with Eddie. And uh, Keith Richards, you know, <laughs> Keith, Rich Keith Richards should just make the list simply because of the fact that the man has managed to stay alive. Um, you know, just that fact alone that he, you know, could stay alive. That's fine. And we could start getting kind of maybe more into the rock players. Did we take the apex of the jazz players? Well, what about Scott Henderson fusion player, right? I'd put Scott Henderson right here, you know, actually, well, I don't know. He kind of competes with Frank Gambali a bit, but that's okay. I think Scott would be just fine right here. So we have, uh, Scott Henderson. Okay. But now what about, Okay, you have some other, there's a chops player here. Tom Morello, I wouldn't really consider him a chops player, but he definitely makes the list because he's just so damn daring and innovative, right? So yeah, of course, Tom Morello is one of the guys who made using effects in a really cool, creative way. So, okay, he uh, stays on the list. Uh, Freddie King, <laughs> yeah, dude's a beast. All right, he stays on the list. Steve Ray Vaughan, actually, why is he so low? Maybe he deserves to be actually up higher. This whole list is just, I don't know, it, it's all sort of backwards. I mean, and what, is it ranked? I mean, then what? Who goes Who goes first, James Hetfield or Kirk Hammett, right? I would say that James Hetfield is a better rhythm guitar player than Kirk Hammett is a lead player. I don't say that lightly either because I love... Uh, the way Kirk Hammett plays. He's also an influence of mine. But um, I don't know. I, I would probably rank Hetfield higher. Kirk Hammett would have to go back some... Well, unless you want to consider how good he is on the wah. He's one hell of a wah player. So, uh, But then again, Guthrie also is. So I don't know. Again, it's hard to say. But who ranks above? I don't know. You tell me in the comments. But the list is all sorts of screwed up. So I was looking at, like they take Andy Summers, they shove him all the way in the back. But yet, meanwhile, the guy is a human synthesizer. I mean, listen to the police songs, right? It always sounded like they had like all these keyboards and stuff going on. That was all this guy right here. So what the hell is he doing at the very bottom of the list? So, so yeah, again, they're saying like, oh, well, the 250 greatest guitarists of all time. I've already thrown in a whole ton of players on that uh, top 10 list, top 10 re-tiering list that didn't even make this list at all. And, you know, they're essentially saying, well, if you don't make the list, then you are uh, at least below Andy Summers, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they're going to have some kind of demure, modest way of describing it. Like they're going to say, oh, he we chose heaviness over tastiness. Okay. Feel over polish. Okay, invention over refinement. See, but all these go hand in hand. I mean, I don't know. What's, what's, I mean, you, you can invent and refine. I don't get it. Risk takers and originators more than technicians. Okay. Technicians, though, generally are risk takers, right? Technicians tend to get a lot of flack because of how technically that they're able, able to play. So I'm starting to see them more as risk takers and and originators nowadays. Um, but then they say, you know, we also gave an edge to artists who channeled whatever gifts God gave them into great songs and great changing albums, not just impressive playing. But again, I don't know what kind of weight that should have on it. I mean, you know, being a great songwriter and being a great guitar player, 
are really two different things. So I don't know why they why don't why don't they just call it the 250 greatest guitarists and songwriters of all time? <laughs> Whatever, because that, that's really what this list is. Now, if you saw that title, you'd probably never want to read it, right? Um, but that's exactly what they're giving you. They're giving you this big slab of crap that you you don't want to read it. You know, I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. They put, uh, I don't know. This list is wrong, and obviously they did not involve any guitar players in putting this list together. Um, they actually said it was all their editors and writers, so it didn't sound like their editors and writers would know a guitar player if a guitar player, you know, crashed into them somehow. So there you go. Your 250 greatest guitarists of all time list. I mean, if some some other creature who were visiting from another planet and didn't know what a guitar was. And they took this list and they threw it at them and said, here you go. Here's your definitive list. Go listen to them and study them down. By the time they leave, they still won't know what the hell a guitar player is. So there you go. Like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.